from a really horrendous uh, passage in September. They've now put up four consecutive wins, which do the morale a part of good. And quite important for them, back in goal, after a long spell through injury, Pat Bonner, the Republic of Ireland internationalist, who was very vital to the Celtic defence when they won the double. Well, this is what the Germans describe as their away team, the minus two very key players from the play at home, Herbert Meyer and Frank uh, Manfred Buchsmuller. But that is number four, Ronnie Bratzer. He is valued by Alec Ferguson at £800,000, the Norwegian international. We go. The game started by Emilio Soriano Aladren from Spain. We shall now call him Senor Aladren throughout the match. Well, Billy McNeil's message to his troops has been a very straightforward one. He said to his team, give us the fire and the passion which won us a league championship in the Scottish Cup and the Germans will not be able to withstand it. And there's a tall figure of Bratzett. Herman. Voltaire. Something really having to turn the tables in that area, get the counter-attack going quickly. No doubt about it, we'll get a lot of spirit from Celtic tonight. It's got to be allied to technique and a bit of poise. That was Brad Setflex. Loud roars from the Celtic crowd, but that was an excellent tackle from the rear by the Norwegian. Towering ball yet again. Stark. He done well. Tackled by Barocca. Uli Barocca. One of the great central defenders in European football. Valued at a, a million pounds. And Verde will hang on to him like grim death. Akadani. Cluster of players. Stark trying to go in and Celtic get the corner. Thomas Schaff at the near post just got that header in. There's a touch he wanted. That beat Sharp at the near post. Total misjudgment. Look at the way they're fighting this time. Joe Miller. Oh. Well, they're forcing him to go back, though. Should be more penetration, and you see the initiative is lost. Well, that's a superb pass. This is Ridley. Well, I don't know what went through his mind there. Well, he might have challenged, but there was nobody beside him, certainly. Weak finish. Oh, a bit of wrestling going on. The referee allows the play to go on, and what's been given at first? I think the Celtic supporters thought there might have been a penalty involved, but they really did look very awkward for the first time in the game through the through the middle, and this could be interesting. Paul McStay. He has Morris on the outside, and it's wasted. Well, I myself was expecting Formic State to have a, a spectacular lash at that. He really can't hit them in from there, but maybe the Germans were doing exactly the same. And he tried to fox them, it didn't come off.
this is where they can be dangerous on the breakaway Voltaire waiting for players to come up Broca does now Kutsov they are not relishing the way Celtic are tackling very hard but efficient and clean Rogan. Oh, superbly spread. Now, Aiken. No side. Miller had to come back, though. And they almost get through, and that was much too hard, that pass back. I don't think he really tried that. Well, with the tall central defenders, you can see that Celtic might do much better to keep it on the ball like this play it around touch it and he might get the break rather than the high ball deep and high for McCarthy and he doesn't do terribly well in that Walker is there and it's in Ooh, no, it's from this angle it looked in oh dear Dreadful blunder in the Celtic defence. Porter making a hash of it. Look, an open goal, and it was a side netting. Well, that's the nearest either side has come to breaking this deadlock. Said the big men have been laughing the high balls up, but when you play them um, on the grass, at the feet, going at them quickly, passing the ball as you approach them, they look a bit unsteady. Free kick to Celtic. That's not a bad effort by Stark, you know. Look at the length of it again. Well, quite clearly the German coach, Otto Rehavel, has uh, studied the Celtic side and told his goalkeeper to hit high balls towards central defence. Doing it all the time. Beautiful little slip. Well, Bonus hits that very well. That was from the... Bremen captain, Motaba. The Germans now give the impression they very clearly know what they're doing in this match. They are setting the pace and the style of it. Tantalizing one. Oh. Ridley again. How dangerous this is. Carol Hines Ridley. A very brave run forward. He scored 18 goals in the Bundesliga last season. Second top scorer. With a mixture of skill and obvious courage as well. Well, Celtic must not become careless like that. It's suicide. Light, giving the ball away. That's not a bad ball either, but McCarthy had come back. Now next day in the break. That's a better ball, and is it still in Miller? Now that's very useful and brilliant they take it. Oliver Reck was stretched there, but the entire Werder Bremen defence, and didn't he do that well? <laughs> a 
hit surely with a free kick and a booking. It must be a booking for Kutso. No, it was for Bolter. The right midfield player coming down there and pulling like a very back. What Selby could do with a goal now, two minutes to have time. It's Aiken. Oh, they came out very quickly. Well, they don't like these balls. That was conceded by Votava. The right time to exert the screw. McCarthy is up for it. Team Werder Bremen with everything in the first 15 minutes, they weathered the storm. We always expected this to be a very tight game and for the Germans to play with confidence and skill and great danger in the breakaway. And it's followed that formula almost exactly. I would imagine Celtic have a, a very hard fight on their hands, even to get a goal in this match in the second half. Well, as we start the second half, I think we would all agree that uh, Billy McNeil got the answer from his players. They gave him a great deal of passion and fight in that first half. Now they've got to change it into penetration. And if things stay the way they are, with goalkeeping like that, I will not be at all surprised if Andy Walker, their top goal scorer from last season, who's on the bench, will make a very quick appearance in the second half. And that is a sort of confident and highly skilled technical football we've had from the Germans. And this... Well, that could have killed Celtic right off. And the Celtic goalkeeper, Paddy Warner, not only has returned to form, but has instilled his defence with a better degree of confidence than that lately. Almost got away with that. I thought it was an arm. Morris. Well, McIverney worried the German defenders in the early stages of the first half, and then he was much more closely marked as the Bremen defense got its feet. they want to cool it a little trying to get them to stay there he is now fly in with the ball get it moving from midfield <laughs> that was very unlike Paul McStay I can assure you little glimpse of frustration in his face there Bit too loose, taken down by McGee, McIverney. Oh, brilliantly saved! All of a wreck, the best save of the evening. And for the first time in the game, McIverney created a little bit of freedom for himself. And that was net bound, make no mistake about it. McCarthy up. And a very good start by Celtic to this half. I must say, the Germans came out on for the field at the start of the second half rather arrogantly, sort of waving and clapping to the crowd as if it were not such a, a great strain on them tonight. And this is the right kind of Celtic response. Up and 
by Joe Miller. Free kick. Baruka. Well, Baruka is an excellent... But that's that shot by McAvenny. Goalkeeper moving very quickly along his line to that. Free kick to Celtic. Morris with it. Well, the goalkeeper got to it all right, but that was amateurish. There's clearance. No offside. Voltaire. Beautifully judged there by Voltaba. And the pass inside, easily marked. Fortunately for Celtic. Another highly typical German break, that. Well, there's little doubt about it in the homework that Werner Bremen have done about Celtic, they've decided to test out the two Celtic central defenders with these very high balls. That was Bratseff. Roy Aiken. Beautifully down the outside, and Paddy Bonner has to come for that beautiful. One of the best passes out of defence of the night. Down the step. This time. He has a little bit of room. And again. Miller. Wrong side. Stark. Oh, beautifully picked up by Voltaire. Only two forward for Werder, though. And all he wanted to do was get rid of it. Stay now seeing one of the ball in midfield. Morris looking for a one-two. Oh, very bad mistake there indeed by Voltaba, the captain. Next day. And that's a better ball for the first time. They opened up that German defence. That was the right kind of penetration. They did get between the defenders. And McAvenny just a little unfortunate. I think Celtic have controlled themselves better in this half. We've played about seven minutes, they've put a lot of pressure on the Germans, but it's been with a kind of discipline, good passing. And that makes a difference. Bye-bye, Bratsev. Not a single German player anywhere near the Celtic half. Stark. Intelligent ball! McGee, all he needed was a little touch. Roger Berger. Wasn't out again either. That's Morris. Aiken. There's Joe Miller. Almost got away with it. Might get a free kick and does. Joe Miller's great asset is he can go at a defender. That lovely little jinking movement changes the direction of play very well. Well out. White was there, like stay. It's a better ball, and that's 
One little flick by McAvenny, so typical of finish by him. There he is. Taken away by Brad Seth. Desperately unlucky Celtic. Well, the Germans are doing nothing up front now. Even the breakaways have a rather pallid look about them. And Celtic, with the right kind of pressure, have been moving the ball about well. Getting the ball down the flanks. Getting into McAvenny for the touch. Here's again. Now well, that was a nicely weighted pass indeed. And White. McCarthy just kept his eye on the ball. Now Morris. Hello. Uh, <laughs> every now and again you get the impression that the Germans might be creaking a little in defence. Oh, he did that well neatly. Look at that as for a ball, Voltaire, Voltaire, and he's done it, Voltaire scores for Werder Bremen, well, no wonder he doesn't want to get up and the embraces are long and passionate for a typical German breakaway, and he took that extremely well, one nothing. And I make it uh, 12 minutes of the second half gone. So often have we seen German sides under pressure and coming back and hitting the net with great determination. Now Burns. Tries to go in and old Walker off the side of his foot. It really is very difficult to come on as a substitute at this stage of the game with desperation creeping in a crowded penalty area like this and not quite warmed up and certainly not getting good balance. Side shaft. Got there by Vataba. Four minutes left. If determination counts for anything, Celtic deserved the equalizer. That was a cruel blow to them, but they kept going on the back of any. He's had no luck, I must say. All good strikers need just fortune to smile on them occasionally, and he didn't get any opening there either. And when you say somebody in Europe has played bravely, yet they go down. I suppose we're damning them with fake praise. But they also had uh, a desertion of luck tonight. There's no question at all about that. You need it in Europe. Must be very difficult for Celtics to swallow. An oh so familiar European game in Scotland. For the home side having so much possession, but not yet able to make it 
the Germans will go to that second leg in two weeks' time with a goal which, on the basis of this game, to my mind, would make them seem quite invulnerable and impregnable. A goal scored by Thomas Voltaire, who's been with the club four years.